Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Streaming Alchemy Show. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the protocol SRT and specifically how that integrates now with the latest software release from NewTek on their TriCast Align. So uh, to get started, it probably makes sense to just talk a bit about West, what exactly SRT is and you know, give you a context to understand everything else we're gonna be doing. So to start off, SRT is a transport protocol. The name is Secure Reliable Transport. That's what the SRT stands for. And what SRT allows you to do is essentially take a package of data, typically audio or video media based data, and move it across a network to another destination. And in practical use, what typically happens is you are taking video and audio sources, encoding them, taking that encoded formatted data, packaging it in SRT, and letting SRT move that across the network to another location where you then decode it and use that as an audio and video source in a production. So that's the typical use case around SRT. But SRT is really designed for transporting video across what would be called unreliable networks. So your local network is typically considered a reliable network. The speed of the network and the number of packets that are lost due to issues on that network typically are small. So that would be considered a reliable network. Well, you can use SRT there. It really shines when you start to look at it in unreliable networks. So an unreliable network could be a network in a venue, which maybe is all local, but which is very congested, or where there's a lot of infrastructure in a local network, where there could be multiple hops across a large campus for a church or a school. Uh, and that could introduce latencies and other types of packet loss that would then have to be accounted for. So SRT is great for those types of situations. Uh, but what SRT actually does, even though it's a low latency protocol, it trades latency for quality. And by that, what you really have, what you really have happening is that you need to allow enough of a window, that's the latency, how much time I'm going to allow data to collect at the receiver end so that if something gets lost, if something gets unordered and arrives in, in the wrong order coming into uh, the remote site, that it can either request that data again or do whatever processing and reordering it needs to synchronize all the information that's coming out at the receiving end. So that's really the bulk of the magic in SRT because it has really great smarts for how it quickly can ask for packets again if it loses them. And it has smarts around making sure everything by the time it's released by SRT uh, will come out in the correct order. It, it provides that higher quality and higher reliability in the signal. And if you've looked at other protocols uh, that are cross source specifically WebRTC, you can notice that when network conditions degrade, uh, you can easily drop packets or it will drop resolutions and then raise resolutions again to cope with it. Because it really has a minuscule latency in the, in the big picture of a wide area transport protocol. But because of that, uh, you have to deal with all the downsides. So with SRT, add more latency, have that quality uh, baked into what you would have as your end result. Now, the thing I, I often hear about is people sort of compare NDI and SRT. And there are a few important differences. Uh, like I said in the beginning, NDI uh, and S SRT rather could easily run on a local network. There's no issue with that. And even with very, very low latencies, WebRTC or even NDI level latencies. But the real differences come around how you actually interact with the protocol. So for NDI, NDI has a 
codec baked into it. So, it, you know, for audio and video compression, that's baked into NDI. So NDI and NDI HX and NDI HX2 all have variants on uh, the, the compression decompression algorithm, but it's baked into those protocols. They also have automatic discovery. So they're using, uh, you know, a web broadcast that announces every source that's available using NDI that you can then go and subscribe to. Uh, and as we mentioned, it's, it's very high quality, very low latency for NDI. With SRT, you get to dial in the latency, as we mentioned, and you also get to select the codecs you want to use. In the beginning, we mentioned it's a transport protocol, so it doesn't have any inherent codec baked into it. This means that it's very, very flexible and really future-proof in a lot of ways because if there are new codecs or new types of uh, media, that can all be bundled in to a standard SRT wrapper that transports that to the other end of a pipe to be decoded. So you have protocols, though, that do not have discovery with SRT. So everything you're doing around the transport requires that you specify who the receiver is going to be or who the sender is going to be. So you, you have different ways to establish the connection. But in any case, you always need to have an IP address and a port that you're going to use to make that connection happen on. So it isn't as friendly in a local network uh, as NDI, but it is a lot more reliable than NDI in a wide area setting. Now, I know people have used uh, different types of VPNs and very high quality networks to do NDI over a wide area, but really SRT is the best solution for that. And reciprocally, NDI is really the best solution for IP video on a local area, high quality network. So uh, let's talk a bit about, we talk, mentioned the, the, the transport protocol. How does SRT handle this? So when you set up SRT, you can set up a station as a caller or a listener. So what a caller will do is a caller will use the, an IP address and a port to try to connect to a listener that it can then start to send uh, audio and video to. Reciprocally, a listener is waiting at an IP address to receive a call from a caller and pull in that audio and video. So that's really the two main modes. When you set something up, it's either the caller or it's the listener. The other thing, though, is that SRT has this hybrid mode called rendezvous mode. Uh, not to be confused with the WebRTC stack under Wirecast for remote guest. Uh, so in rendezvous mode, you basically have simultaneously the caller trying to call and the listener trying to listen, and they sort of reach out to each other. So in rendezvous mode, the person that wants to receive, this, the station that wants to receive the video will send out a rendezvous call with their IP address and uh, their port. And the, the caller will also send out a rendezvous uh, message with that same information. And they try to match up. So this gives you the ability in situations where you may need to try to bypass some limitations of firewalls and other things. It gives you another option for having this connection happen. But at the end of the day, it's still really just a, a caller and a listener model for sending this information. The other thing to consider, and this is really for anybody that's working out of a, a, a traditional sort of network environment where you only have typically a single IP address or a limited number of public IP addresses, IPs that would work across the internet. And so most of the time, that would be sitting somewhere in a router 
that would be connected to the internet and all the systems behind that router have or be basically local non-routable IP addresses. So that would be the 192.168, so the 10.0 range of IP uh, addresses. All of those addresses would typically be internal non-routable addresses. So that causes a problem because if you're trying to have somebody across the internet connect to a system behind your router with a private IP, that isn't going to work very well. Uh, so what you actually need to do is something called port forwarding. So most routers will allow you to listen, to take an IP address, their, their main IP address, and a port. And anytime somebody talks to that public IP address on that port, you can then forward it to a private IP address on any port you want. But typically, you, know, you can do it on that same port to move that information off the wide area network into the private network space. And that's called port forwarding. So what you will need to do, uh, if this is your typical setup, would be to take and port forward from your public IP address on the ports that you set up for SRT, port forward that to the local IP address of the device that you want to have listen or call and uh, that same port. And I'll, I'll go into you know, how that would look on the other side, but every router is going to be set up differently. So it's something that you'd have to, to look at the documentation for your router uh, to see how you need to handle that. But that's something to keep in mind. You will need some level of networking expertise to try to handle this if uh, you're going to be doing this within your uh, local infrastructure. So I guess the, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how you would set this up on a TriCaster. Now, in the latest release of uh, Nutex TriCaster software, they added a capability to take an embed IP-based cameras with all different types of protocols outside of NDI and make those sources that the TriCaster can pick up. So I have a little video here, which I captured uh, before the show, that goes through what, would actually, what that process actually looks like on the TriCaster. So if I just start to play this here. So there is an add-on. This is in the, uh, the TriCast interface which gives you the uh, network IP source manager. And in there, you can see a whole set of IP sources that you have set, these cameras that are IP based. And what you want to do is you want to go in and basically create a custom camera here. And in the custom camera, you can give it a name. And the naming scheme we've used here is we're telling it that it's an SRT listener, because in the TriCaster we're sending these up as listeners, and then we're specifying the port. So in this case, I believe it's, it's 9002 is the port. Then uh, we actually need for the URL to put in SRT as the protocol, and then for the IP address, since this is a listener, we're using the internal IP address of our TriCaster, which is 10.0.0.108. And then we're putting in the port that we want to use, which is 9002. But then we're telling it that we want to open this with the mode of being a listener. So you do the question mark mode equals listener. And when we've done this, we now in the TriCaster have set up something that we can use as a new source of video. And so if I actually want to you know, so show you the next step. I'm going to jump into the TriCaster now. And let me just go over here. So uh, if you want to now work with any of these sources in the TriCaster, and we'll see if we can see this, I actually have a few uh, inputs set up that are built now for SRT. So 
we'll take this SRT REM3 over here, which is our remote input three. And if I come into this right now, the source we have set up for this is just to uh, a Blackbird signal, just a, a, a blank signal that's coming in. But if we go in here and look under local, what we'll see here is that we now have that camera, that local camera that we just created, which is really our SRT protocol. So if we click on here and we can listen to that, now anybody that calls in to that port, to port 9002, uh, is going to connect over to here. So this is very straightforward, but what it lets me do is build a whole set of IP, potential IP cameras that I can use. Some of these can be remote, others, others can be network-based. Uh, and this is in addition to the NDI cameras we have, and now integrate them into our production directly. So what I'd like to do, if I you know, just switch out of this here, what I'd like to do is go in and show you the other side of this. And to do that, I'm gonna use vMix. Now, one of the great things that vMix added in uh, version 23 was support for SRT. So the way you set up SRT and vMix is over here in the settings field. So if you click on settings, you'll see all the settings you can have for this production. And one of them, the second one down, is outputs, NDI and SRT. So if we click on here, what you'll see, this is uh, vMix 4K. So this has four potential outputs in addition to uh, uh, you know, the, the traditional full screen outputs that are already you know, used for routing out the stream. Uh, so what we're doing, we're going to do is we're going to take and take output number two here, and we're going to configure this to work with SRT. So in this case, the way you can do this is here you have the enable SRT, so you would check that off. And now you have to say, what do I want? What part of the protocol is this SRT uh, system going to be using? And in this case, it's going to be using caller. But you can see I could select listener or rendezvous, so all the ones that we mentioned before. So because the system I'm working on here is on the same local network as uh, our TriCaster, uh, I'm just going to put the local IP address. But if this were across the internet, this would be our public studio IP address. So this would be something that we'd want to set up so we could take and uh, reach across the internet and have that routed to our studio from a remote location. So. The other thing is, well, just for the port we set up, that was port uh, 9002. So we have this thing now set up so it can talk to an SRT listener waiting on port 9002. The other thing you have here is you have the ability to set the quality. So in this case, it's, you know, we have uh, good local uh, uh, network performance. So we can set this at a very high, so eight megabits uh, uh, as the quality level, so how much bandwidth we're going to allocate to it. Uh, but there are a whole set of options from, you know, things that you can select different protocols, so, and you can select any types of, of bit rates you want it. So, but this is how we, we have this, this set up right now. The other thing we have set up is the latency. So in this case, we could actually make this much lower. The 200 milliseconds is the default latency. So that's about a fifth of a second. But a good way to figure out what latency you need would be from the caller, ping the IP address of the listener. And that will give you the latency that exists in that connection. Uh, from there, We'd recommend multiplying that by a factor of four or five. So if we had 50 milliseconds here, I would probably, as the ping latency, I would probably put in 250 milliseconds as the SRT latency to make sure that there's enough buffer, literally, to 
handle any uh, line uh, conditions that could come up that could cause the connection to degrade. So that's really what you need to do to set everything up. So when you have this set, the only other thing you really need to do is just go down here and under the gear next to external, there's a field for SRT. And just make sure that for whichever one of those four SRT channels, if it's a uh, uh, 4K uh, version of vMix, make sure that it's checked as enabled. Uh, for anything below 4K, you're only going to have one output. But a cool thing to keep in mind is SRT is supported in vMix all the way down the product line. So from the free version all the way up. So in the free version, you have uh, like a quarter of a uh, HD signal resolution, some sort of hybrid, you know, 700 by 500 roughly uh, video resolution. But in basic HD, which is a $60 version of vMix, you can have a full HD uh, caller basically baked into this. So this could give you a very simple way uh, very low cost way to set up a caller at a remote location that you want to bring in to your productions. So something to keep in mind, but when all this is set up, what you'll now find is that anything that we send out of the program output here on vMix will be sent out to a caller. So uh, I believe, you know, if I were to bring up SRT caller uh, SRT REM3, which is, this is the third one here, uh, you'll see uh, everything that I have uh, going on here uh, as an SRT stream that we've set up. So it's, it's very, very flexible to, to use SRT. There are lots of great components that are sort of bundled in uh, to make sure now that if you're using vMix with the TriCaster, very simple way you can have one production running here that feeds into uh, your TriCaster, which could be your master switch. Uh, it can also be that you simply just take a camera. So there are some great applications. Uh, I believe that uh, Garen has a mini SRT server that will take an NDI feed, convert it to SRT, and let you send that over the network. So again, if you just want to have a camera at a remote location, and bring that in as a signal. Uh, lots of great options to do that. So really the SRT ecosystem is pretty broad and pretty impressive. It's baked into hardware with you know direct hardware encoders. I know Kiloview has, has some of those. There may be some that are also available from Magewell uh, as well as these, these software options. So a lot of flexibility here. But the other thing that I wanted to show you is that uh, the person who normally does our, uh, our switching here, uh, our technical director, Joe, he's actually, you know, because we're all sort of working separately now, he's actually up north of New York City. And we're down just outside of Trenton in New Jersey. But we actually have him running a signal from his house, uh, sending it down here over SRT into our TriCaster. So what I'd love to show you is this is the quality we're getting over SRT from somebody who's probably about 80 miles away uh, over the public internet. So the latency we have baked into here is about 200 milliseconds because he has a good internet and we have a good internet. But this is the type of capability you get by integrating SRT. And with the real push to do a lot more remote productions, uh, SRT is going to be something that will be an important part of your production toolkit uh, once you get to know it. I think you'll see the benefits right away. And everything from dealing with cameras at remote locations to potentially bringing in a feed from a switcher that is doing a part of a production into a master control room that can then mix all those things together. Uh, all these things are possible. And if you think about some of the major things that require uh, intervention, things like the graphics operator, 
your ability now to take and have the graphics operator send the overlay graphics in from a remote location can actually make you more competitive. You not only, you know, given social distancing, there's a lot more restrictions on the number of people that can operate in a single control room, but you may find that if you're doing sports and having, you know, a traveling sports, uh, you know, crew that actually covers, covers games live, having some of those positions able to operate remotely means you don't have to have that person travel. You can, you know, spend less time on the clock and requires you to move less gear, set up and tear down less gear. So a lot of structural benefits, uh, even outside, you know, the obvious current limitations. So it will become something I think you'll find ways to integrate into your productions and enhance them and facilitate a much more efficient, much smoother workflow for a lot of the things you do. So that's it. I know this was a brief overview of SRT and there's probably a lot more we'll cover in future shows, but I think this should give you enough of an insight to actually start playing with it. And I also want to emphasize that now this is available on the TriCaster. So this really now covers, uh, you know, from people using vMix to the TriCaster, <clears throat> a whole range of <clears throat> the production space, you know, with the switches and components that people, most of the people in this uh, community are actually using. So definitely try it out, experiment, and figure out how to make it work for you. Okay, so on our next show, we're gonna take a look at something that my company NeuralNet has been working on for quite a while. Uh, it is a new product that we're rolling out next month in July called Live to Air Pro. So with Live to Air Pro, you actually can bring in up to 48 remote guests and it's baked in a whole set of interactive features to let them raise hands, approve, disapprove, do quizzes and polls. Uh, so very interesting stuff I think we've been working on here that I, I wanna share with everybody. And we'll be digging into that on our next show. So until then, be well, have a good week, bye.